You guys know I'm all about helping the average Joe generate cash flow through dividend stocks, selling covered calls, etc. But the truth of the matter is most average Joe investors are starting from zero or close to zero. And honestly, starting with dividend stocks and selling covered calls, especially if this is your retirement fund, is not necessarily the best path forward. In fact, I believe getting your retirement investing in order is the very first thing you should do when you get started rather than try to generate a bunch of cash flow. And I also believe that investing in the S&P 500 is the the very best way to get started. So with that in mind, I'm going to share with you my top three picks for S&P 500 ETFs for the average Joe investor. So the interesting thing is there are over 100 different S&P 500 ETFs, or at least related to the S&P 500. In my mind, there are three key factors we need to think about before we select an S&P 500 ETF. Number one is the expense ratio. If you're paying more than 25 basis points or 50 basis points for an S&P 500 ETF, you're doing it wrong. There are now more low cost options than ever before. So we're gonna evaluate which ones are best when it comes to the lowest expense ratio. Number two, diversification. Now you might be thinking, well, why would we talk about diversification? Aren't we already owning the S&P 500? Well, yes, but not all S&P 500 ETFs are created equal in how they are structured. Most S&P 500s are market capitalization weighted, meaning that the biggest companies have the biggest weighting in the index. But there are other ways to do it that may be a better fit for you. So we'll talk about that. And third, I have to include this because it's within context of my channel, the ability to sell options. The ability to sell options is gonna be factored into how much liquidity and volume for that particular ETF. And there is a wide swing between the different options. So we're gonna explore that as well, especially since many people who watch this channel are also thinking down the road, hey, once I do have 100 shares of this ETF, I do plan on selling covered calls. So we need to keep that in mind. So I use the Fidelity Screener to do this review. And the interesting thing is you can go as high as 1.01% on the net expense ratio right here. And clearly there are other options here you just wanna avoid. So let's start by filtering by the net expense ratio. And there is essentially is a three-way tie for the best expense ratio S&P 500. First off, we have Vanguard's S&P 500 ETF, ticker symbol VOO, which has an expense ratio of 0.03%. Then we also have from iShares, the iShares Core S&P 500 ETF, ticker symbol IVV, which has the same expense ratio, 0.03%. And then this one right here, which is interesting, it's not SPY, but it's also from State Street. SPLG, the SPDR Portfolio S&P 500 ETF, and they recently, as of August 1st, 2023, reduced their expense ratio by, from 0.03% down to 0.02%, which does in fact make it the lowest cost S&P 500 indexed ETF. Now, the truth of the matter is, the difference between 0.03% and 0.02% is not that big of a deal. If you were to look at a $10,000 investment in this ETF, then the annual expense would be $2, but it would only be $3 with the other two, IVV and VOO. It's not a fundamental difference. Even if you had $1 million, the cost every year would be $200 compared to $300. The difference of $100 makes a big difference when you're a starter investor, but not when you have a million dollars. So if it's really critically important to you, you could use SPLG here, but they're fundamentally the same investments. For SPLG, 30.37% weighting in the top 10 holdings, which is the same for VOO, and it's the same for IVV. They're fundamentally the same investments. And the reason why they have different prices is because they are originated and launched on different dates. These are very close together, and SPLG is much lower. You can expect that to go up in the future. So this three-way tie here for the lowest cost expense ratio for the S&P 500 ETF, three-way tie. Uh, ultimately, these are the investments you would choose if you're just starting out and you really wanna factor in low costs and you have no plan to sell options or covered calls. And especially if you plan to do this in a brokerage account because there could be a significant cost to switch investments if you change your mind. So if you're doing it in a retirement account, it really doesn't matter. You could start with this investment and move to a different S&P 500 ETF if you wanted to. But these would be great fits if you're just starting out, you have no plans to sell covered calls, they're really low cost, they're gonna be a great fit for you. Now we're looking at the second factor here, which has to do with diversification. And I mentioned to you before, all of these S&P 500 ETFs, at least the most of them, 
they are what's known as market capitalization weighted. Meaning when you look at the breakdown of the investments here, companies like Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Nvidia, uh, Google, Tesla, Facebook, etc., they have much larger weightings right here than the other investments in the ETF, such as if we scroll all the way down here, these are all companies that have much lower market caps, Comerica, Invesco, Whirlpool, Robert Half, Ralph Lauren, these have much lower weightings in the ETF. And what this means is the movement in these companies up here is gonna move the ETF significantly. If companies like Apple and Microsoft struggle, then this indexed ETF is gonna go down, even if the other companies do well, because they have a much higher weighting. But there is a different way of doing it. And this is known as equal weighted indexes, meaning that instead of giving the biggest companies the biggest weightings, meaning that companies like Apple, Microsoft, Amazon would have an equal weighting in the index as these companies weigh down here, Comerica, Robert Half, Franklin Resources, et cetera. And the argument for that is, hey, I wanna have a balanced ETF. I wanna be able to equally invest in all of the companies because they're all the 500 biggest companies and I don't wanna be beholden to just a few of the companies if they make a significant mistake or their company crashes for some reason. And in my mind, the best ETF for doing this, if you want to take this approach, is from Invesco, the S&P 500 Equal Weighted ETF, ticker symbol RSP. It's based on the S&P 500 Equal Weighted Index and they will invest at least 90% of their assets and they will equally weight the stocks in the S&P 500 and then rebalance quarterly. The reality here is that this requires a lot of rebalancing and so there's gonna be a higher expense ratio than what you would get with the others. But if you'll notice, we'll, we'll cover that in a second. If you'll notice here, let's go down to our actual investments here. You'll notice the top investments here are Old Dominion Freight Line or Carrier Global because they're all right around 0 0.26, 0 0.24, 0 0.23%. And some of them are a little bit lower here like 0.17, 0.18 because they need to be rebalanced quarterly and the reality is these companies move throughout the year and they have to rebalance quarterly. One thing you'll note here is that within information technology, Nvidia makes up 20.24%, Intuit 0.23%, Adobe 0.22%, and companies like Apple right here, 0.19%. So it's truly an equal weighted index ETF. And so you might be wondering to yourself, hey, am I actually gonna get the same returns with an equal weighted ETF as if you have a market cap one? And the answer is probably not, but let's look at the historical results here. If you come down, if you go to performance right here, it's gonna show you the difference between the equal weighted index in dark blue versus the S&P 500 index in lighter blue. And year to date, the equal weighted index is not performing as well. It's only at 10.73% versus 20%. And this is the result of larger companies having greater returns so far year to date, which have a lower weighting in this equal weighted ETF. But if you look at the one year return, it's a little bit closer, eight versus 13. If you look at the three year return, it's 15% for the equal weighted index, 13% for the S&P 500 index. If you go to five years, it's 10 versus 12. In the 10 year, it's 11.26 versus 12.66. If you look at since inception, which is since April of 2003, we've got 11.49% total return for the equal weighted index and 10.46% for the S&P 500 index. I don't know what the future holds, but I do think it is interesting that you have the opportunity to do an equal weighted index. So if your goal is to be more balanced in your approach and be able to equally invest in all the companies, this is a great option for you. Full warning though, it does have a higher expense ratio. Coming down here, you'll see the expense ratio is 0.20%, meaning that on a $10,000 investment, you're gonna pay $20 annually for the cost of the fund versus three or $2 potentially for VOO or IVV or the others. So I wouldn't necessarily say it's a meaningful difference, but it is different and something that you should take into account because at a million dollars, it's gonna be the cost of $2,000 versus 300, which might be a big deal to you. For the record, another option here is from Goldman Sachs, the equal weighted US large cap equity ETF. It's not necessarily tied to the S&P 500, though they do mention it and it does have a lower expense ratio at 0.09%. So that's another one to consider. And when it looks at their weightings here, the top 10 holdings each are on 0 0.25, 0 0.24, 0.23%. So it does appear to be the same approach at a lower cost. The only difference is this fund was launched in 2017 versus the fund from Invesco, which was from 2003. So a lot more history there, but certainly another one you could look at. The last characteristic we should look at here is the ability to sell 
covered calls or to utilize options. And from this perspective, you may already know where I'm angling. And the truth is there is no better option to do this than from State Street, the SPDR S&P 500 ETF Trust, also known as SPY. It has by far the most assets under management, $432 billion assets under management, currently priced at 440 and 70 cents. And the big benefit here is the option chain is amazing. It's got by far the most volume and liquidity. It's got daily expirations. So depending on how you wanted to write your covered calls, you could utilize daily options if you wanted to be heavily active. Two, three, four, five day expirations. You could go weekly, you could go monthly, completely up to you. You have a lot of versatility there. And there's a lot of volume here. You can work with a lot of different strike prices. The option chain here for like IVV from iShares, it doesn't do daily, it does weekly. And there is a significantly less amount of open interest and volume with IVV. And with VOO, they don't even do weekly. They do monthly options here. And there's a lot less volume there. So if you're gonna utilize options from the outset, you definitely wanna use SPY. And if you're investing in a brokerage account, with the plans to sell covered calls in the future, you need to start with this fund as well because otherwise there are gonna be capital gains if you looked to switch investments. If you're doing it in a retirement account, you could easily start with VOO or IVV or another S&P 500 ETF and then just switch and there'd be no capital gains or tax consequences for doing so. But if you're doing it in a brokerage account, you need to be mindful of that and you would start with this ETF. It has by far the most versatility. It's really the only ETF here that's gonna be a great option for you for selling options and potentially even using cash secured puts, but also definitely covered calls. Hopefully you found some value in this video, guys. Make sure to leave your two cents down in the comments below. It's my goal to respond to all comments left on the day I post a new video. And if there are other videos you wanna see and other topics you want me to discuss, make sure to leave that with your two cents down in the comments below. That's all I got for you guys in this video. Have a great rest of your day and thanks for watching.